everyone and welcome to another newscast. My name is Sam Healy. In this video, we're going to tell you all of the latest news about our projects as well as the company. Now, as always, if you don't want to watch the entire video, you can skip to the parts that interest you by utilizing the timestamps in the description below. In Time of Legends Joan of Arc this week, we have two more books to show you. They're shorter than the others, but their content really isn't short at all. Here are the Dragon and the Unleash Hell scenarios. As always, you'll find the links in the video description below as well as in the Kickstarter updates. The Dragon scenario, which had already been updated a while ago, even before our 1.5 campaign, has been brought up to 1.5 standards now. Special rules have been slightly tweaked to take into account the new 1.5 core set of rules and we've updated the unit profiles showcased in the scenario. The scenario tiles are also noted under the setup diagram. For the Unleash Hell scenario, we were fairly satisfied with how it turned out, so not so much has been changed when compared to its 1.0 iteration. The Demonic Legions unit has been upgraded a bit though, because we wanted to make sure they wouldn't break the scenario. To go along with their updated profile, we touched up some of the intrigues in the scenario to giving more devilishly fierce powers to the unholy players. So prepare to wreak havoc on the battlefield. Moving on to Solomon Kane, today we want to begin sharing Wings in the Night Act 1. Solomon Kane is in the west coast of Africa and begins making his way into the not so friendly jungle. Amidst the vines and thorns of this harsh terrain, he spots a tribal village. And now he must decide, take the long way around, adding days to his journey, or risk continuing on his current course where he might be spotted by the tribespeople. A bit further into the story, our Puritan finds himself in the savannah. While different at its core, this land is just as harsh as the jungle. Cain has to encounter tribal warriors until a more daunting enemy arrives, a leopard. <laughs> well, will our Puritan manage to escape? More to come in the next act. Moving on to Super Fantasy Brawl, we have some more pictures from the production of the game, and this time it's for the sleeves. As you know, we created several sleeves bundles as well as champion art sleeves. We are very happy to share these pictures with you today, so enjoy. Moving on to Steam Watchers, today you get to see Delphine from the Rhone Conglomerate. One of the Conglomerate's top tier engineers, Delphine has been selected by the secret oligarchs, the Collective, to carry out their every whim. As a master scrapper and engineer, Delphine is always ready to tear equipment down or come up with some kind of dangerous contraption. Astute as she is, however, Delphine has grown to mistrust the Collective. As an engineering prodigy, she's always been shielded from harm and has no real experience upon which to draw. She has no qualms with revenge and knows as little as one can about loss. Thus, she's willing to leave no stone unturned to expose the collective, as she thinks the Roan conglomerate is being manipulated by them. Well, why else would they resort to secrecy? So what do you think of her? Delphine has been drawn by Jocelyn Millet and sculpted by Olivier Till as with all the other leaders. Now, many of you have asked for more information on the new dashboards. Now, we've definitely not swept this under the rug, don't worry. However, we wanted to focus on reworking the main board, which has taken a good chunk of time. It was important to us because from that board, we had to redo also the steam column spawns. And we've also laid out all Archon cards and touched up the deployment cards as well. Anyway, we're really excited to give you the final design of the dashboards. And for example, here's the Rheinstam dashboard. You may notice how we shrunk the right part and moved the contrabrand to free up some space for the artwork. Even the surplus line is fainter now. Now, even the busiest of the boards displays the art in a nice way, the Free Fleet being the main offender with their long incubation track and huge contraband supply. 
but we're really happy with how they turned out, as well as the aforementioned cards and board work that we're wrapping up. This means that the game is beginning to take its final form. And finally, to hell the last saga, this week our developers are working on a scenario that describes the hero's progress through the deepest part of the sinister forest that surrounds them. This time, however, the danger will not come from the hostiles, but from a paranoid survivor entrenched behind a tangle of traps. Will our heroes be able to overcome this ambush and be able to reason with this survivor's twist in mind? Our painters haven't been idle either. To get the best from the live games that will be filmed in August, the most vicious members of the Treetop Ones tribe, the Pests, Sluggers, and Scarecrow, are now ready to fight. Now, as always, make sure that you remember that September 4th is the closing date of the Pledge Manager. And finally, we're very happy to announce the latest Scald who will be participating in Hell the Last Saga, Nicholas Perez. A classics scholar and a specialist in mythology and epics, Nicholas has largely contributed to the lore of the role-playing game Nephilim, whose Season 2 is currently a huge success on Game on Tabletop. He also contributed to the French versions of the supplements for Call of Cthulhu and the Seventh Sea. For almost 30 years, Nicholas has been a game master in dozens of different role-playing games, and he sometimes abandons the pen for the sword. He's also a fencer, so he's exactly the expertise we need to give the project some cachet. Lastly, the beginning of August is where the Mythic Games team usually takes some days off. This means we won't be updating you on a weekly basis besides something urgent that comes up for a particular project for the next two weeks. We will resume the newscast and What's Up Wednesday's updates on August 19th. This, however, does not mean that everybody will just be lounging around. Projects are still going to be advancing and the team will come back full of energy and ready to tackle everything in their own respective ways. Well, that's it for this week. Stay home, stay safe, and play some games while you're at it. We'll see you on the flip side. Take care.